Welcome to the Real Estate Webcast on Unconditional, brought to you by realestate.co.nz. Uh, this program gives an insight into the property market, a perspective on where things are going in residential property, but also has the opportunity to cover online marketing as it applies to real estate. And today I've got a, an esteemed group of individuals who joined me uh, for a bit of a panel discussion on real estate market in its broad sense. Um, let me introduce the, the individuals. Uh, to my far left, Charles Coxhead, who is a New Zealander specialising in search marketing. Joel Burzum, uh, visiting us from the fine west coast of the States, up in uh, Portland, Oregon. Thank you for joining us. And Simon Baker, all the way from Melbourne, close to home, but uh, thank you. And uh, great to have you guys here. We're all uh, looking forward to the conference we're holding this week, um, Future of Real Estate Marketing. And that really is a great topic to start with. But just let me share with you guys some interesting research that uh, came out recently. We do an annual survey with Nielsen. It's an online survey and it looks to find out a lot about the behaviour of buyers and sellers in New Zealand. And the defining question that I'm always looking for when that survey comes out is, we ask people in the last week, where did you look to find out more about property, research property, research the property market? They're given a list of 15 mediums, everything from bizarrely billboards and TV, right through to search engines, property magazines, company magazines, newspapers, and specialist online real estate websites, as well as company sites. And what is interesting is the trends that have been shown over the last couple of years. And the one I want to start this discussion around is the, the most actively used specialist real estate websites. No surprise to you guys, no surprise, I think, to the industry. That is now a situation where we're seeing eight out of 10 people in the last week are saying they use that, number one choice. The, obviously, the other end of the spectrum is where we've seen traditional media, um, specialist magazines, now falling to 45%, so less than half of people using that actively in the last week. And then national newspapers, which has fallen from one in two to now one in four. So those are clear trends and, and irrefutable. What always interests me is where the money's going. And the money is the marketing this industry spends. And somewhere probably closer to 90% of it is still being spent in print. So to you, Joe, you know, does this surprise you? Not at all. I mean, I think it, it certainly echoes the experience that we've, we've seen in the States. Um, there's historically been that disparity. Mm -hmm. um, I think what I can say is that uh, it's going to change mm -hmm. and, and probably a lot faster than most people would even expect. I mm -hmm. think that tsunami is going to crash on the shores pretty quick where, um, you know, the dollars are just going to flee mm -hmm. print. Um, the question really is, are they actually even going to end up online? Yeah. Um, does it have to? Does it have to? You know, is there efficiencies that come with this for yeah. the benefit of all consumers, industry, everybody else? Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's probably a challenge to the industry, to mm. particularly this, the, the websites, is to to offer um, product, services, um, advertising to the industry that is actually effective and going to attract mm. some of those dollars. I mm. think typically, you know, we've seen in the past. Uh, Sort of banner ad, yeah. featured listings, yeah, premium, uh, premium, premium listings, exactly. Yeah, you know, uh, has has traditionally had a hard time attracting dollars. Uh, mm. The ROI there from the agents, they they question that. Mm. Um, not to say that it doesn't work, mm. but I think that there is some hesitancy still to. It's to still put evolving dollars there. Yeah, I mean, we um, we we found that uh, you've, you've got to prove the numbers, and mm -hmm. the numbers can work if you good good strong premium advertising. And, yeah, and I guess Simon, you know running realestate.com at you, you mm -hmm. saw and developed that whole thing. And, and clearly that was an engine of tremendous growth and, yes. and would have got to a stage well ahead of where New Zealand is now, I guess. Yes, I have a, I have a slightly contrarian view. Okay, mm -hmm. only please. I think if we all sit here and agree, <laughs> it's a bit boring. Exactly. Um, will, will money evaporate from the print, et cetera? I don't think as uh, completely as, as, as Joel's sort of outlining. Mm -hmm. I think the challenge for real estate industry nowadays is that historically brand advertising mm -hmm. to attract sellers mm. and the marketing of the listing were one and the same. True. It was how many pages yeah. in the magazine or mm. the print that I could get side by side that promoted the listing and my brand. Yeah. Now those two have separated mm -hmm. those articles because online you can't have all your listings lined up together mm. to say how big you are. Mm. They get fragmented mm -hmm. based on the search results. So I think from a buyer attraction perspective, mm. yes, print um, actually 
it doesn't really serve the purpose. 80% of people are searching mm. for houses online. That's where the leads are coming from. And if all I was doing as an agent was attracting buyers, mm. then I would never go near print with a 10-foot mm. pole. But the problem I've got is I'm a middleman mm. as an agent. Mm. I have to promote myself. Now, I've got two things I can do to promote myself. One is I've got the listings I've got to say how big I am in a market. Mm. And the second is something about my brand. Mm. Now, the issue is that there are still people reading papers. Mm. There are still people watching mm. TV and there are still people picking up magazines. Yep. And brand building mm. and thus having a marketing budget for my office, which historically agencies haven't had to think about, mm. is now a very important issue. True. And brand building purely online mm. is actually quite hard to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you'll agree there. And, and then the other issue that relates around to this is the average age of a principal of a real estate mm. agency is sort of 55 plus. Mm. And the old saying of teaching old dogs new tricks is, is really applicable mm. here. So I think you're going to see a lot of money still going into print, but more and more, and it gets smarter and smarter around brand building, mm. thus attracting sellers, mm. rather than just promoting houses for sale. Yeah. So slight contrarian view. No, but I, I think you're right. It's interesting because obviously, Joel, you don't have a perspective as much as these guys on the nature of the industry here. This is a, a vendor industry mm -hmm. in terms of the agent. They're representing the vendor. But so they're constantly looking for the leads. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the lifeblood of this industry is finding a property to market. And as you say, Simon, that, that's about brand building. But it's interesting when you talk brand, are you talking the company or the individual? Here mm -hmm. I think the, the challenge is that it'll probably be more around the um, company that mm -hmm. does the branding because mm -hmm. they have access to more resources, mm -hmm. whether it's the creative resources or the cash resources mm -hmm. to do it. Whereas uh, I think the, the individual agents, while they should be building their own brand mm -hmm. and prominence in a market, yeah, it's for, for someone who's a, who's traditionally a salesperson. Mm. Marketing is actually quite a complex skill. Mm. It's not naturally that kind of thing. No, it's not. Yeah. So, so I think you'll end up with a company mm. focusing more on the marketing because yeah. that's what they can actually get their mind around and do yeah. well. And the individuals will probably focus more and more on the selling. Yeah, your point is interesting because uh, turning to Charles, I mean, this is when you look at it from the point of view of attracting uh, sellers. Search engine has got to be a key component of that. And maybe that's what we're talking about here is investment in, in non-display. Because yeah. people always think of marketing dollars as it's ads. It's yeah. all brand. It's all that. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, smart yeah. money. Well, so, so, so I, and I'm really interested to hear from you guys about the extent to which individual real estate offices uh, and, indeed, agents are spending on SEM, on paid search, uh, in, in the U.S. and in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, because absolutely, search engines are obviously a great way to reach sellers potentially quite um, uh, efficiently. Um, but honestly, the demand for the kinds of keywords that sellers are going to be using is is not huge, right? Mm -hmm. at, at any moment in time, there's a lot of people searching for houses for sale, mm -hmm. um, but a you know, pretty small number <coughs> of people searching for you know, around phrases related to selling their house, right? Uh, and so there's you know there's going to be a lot of cost savings potentially, mm. you know, the budget doesn't, just doesn't move to online mm -hmm. directly because, you know, they can't spend that kind of money mm. yep. reaching those people mm. through search. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, what we're seeing certainly on the, uh, on, the, on the seller side is that, you know, traditionally real estate has, or as an, at an agent level has always been about uh, sort of sphere marketing mm. and, um, you know, extending that sphere. And so what I think is most interesting right now is, um, the social arena on online and how that can translate into greater sphere building opportunities for the individual agents. So leveraging things like Facebook, leveraging things like LinkedIn. Mm. Um, there are services out there <clears throat> that are starting to sort of pull all of these diverse social networks together um, that will allow uh, you know an agent who focuses on selling a property to do some of that brand building that you're talking mm. about, Simon, but doing it with within the social arena mm. rather than simply, you know, um, either in search or mm. in, in print. Mm. So, so do agents in the U.S. Uh, or individual offices, are they spending on SEM today, do you think? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. At both um, levels, even at the agent level? Yeah, I know uh, many agents that, that spend very aggressively, um, you know, Google AdWords and that sort of thing. Uh, but again, it's, you know, to, to Simon's point, I think, too, is that it, a lot of that is uh, very much geared on... Uh, attracting buyers right. because yep. uh, there are agents that do a very good living uh, in the United States uh, solely servicing uh, the buyers right. in the transaction. Mm.